Hi everyone, happy Friday or Reishi Kenyobi for those of you in Japan and thank you so much for watching. This week's video is going to be about arguably the single fastest way you can achieve financial stability in the world today and that would be Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in general. Bitcoin surging to levels we haven't seen since Jan 2018. It's up 45% in the past month. It's back above 15,000 today. And despite continued scrutiny from regulators, legendary value investor Bill Miller just told us that he believes Bitcoin is the place to be. For me, and I think for most people, the definition of happiness could be defined as having the ability to do what you want, when you want, as much as possible. This of course means different things for different people, for some, it means doing work you find meaningful, such as becoming the next Warren Buffett or fighting climate change. To others, it means raising a family. And still to others, it means partying all night in Ibiza. In all cases though, to have such freedom, I'd say the most important element is being financially stable, which means you don't have to work a job you don't like or can't do the things with your time that you don't want to do, such as having a family or moving to a different country because you can't afford it. Because at the end of the day, time is the most precious commodity for all of us, at least until Elon Musk figures out a way for us to all live forever. So in this video, first we'll give you a quick overview of what Bitcoin is for those of you who aren't familiar with it. Next, we'll look at the reasons why you should consider investing in Bitcoin. And after that, in order to give you a complete understanding of Bitcoin, we'll look at some of the main arguments against investing in Bitcoin, which are substantial. Next, I'll explain why I decided to invest in Bitcoin, essentially the logic that I used. And then finally, for those of you who are interested, I'll explain how I invested in it, because it's not as simple as trading stocks. So I'll explain what I learned or how you can invest in Bitcoin. Now, before I jump into it, please don't forget to subscribe or smash that like button or bell to get notifications of my newest videos if you like the content. Okay, so to start at the top, what is Bitcoin and where the hell did it come from? Well, Bitcoin is a digital currency, which are also called cryptocurrencies, and it was started in 2009 by an unknown person or group of people using the name Satoshi Nakamoto. The main purpose of Bitcoin is to create a decentralized currency that isn't backed by any country's government or central bank. So no single institution or person can control it, which means it can't be printed at will. Transactions are made with no middlemen, meaning no banks. Similar to commodities, its value is based on its scarcity. So the total amount is limited. And at the moment, only 21 million Bitcoins can ever be in existence according to its code. Bitcoin uses blockchain technology in which transaction records are mutually verified, agreed on, shared, and managed within a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network of participants. Compared to conventional financial systems of currency, this has huge advantages such as greater transparency and reduced costs. Also a quick side note that Bitcoin is far from the only cryptocurrency. In fact, there's thousands of them. Just take a look at how many are available for me to trade within my crypto app, crypto.com. Bitcoin is certainly the biggest by market capitalization, which means the entire value of money invested in the currency. But also other major cryptocurrencies include Ethereum, XRP, and Tether. For this video though, we will just focus on Bitcoin as it is the largest. Bitcoin can now be used to book hotels, buy furniture online, and even buy a coffee at Starbucks while using an app. But much of the hype about Bitcoin is about getting rich by trading it. The price of Bitcoin skyrocketed to nearly $20,000 in 2017 before crashing all the way back to $3,500 in November 2018. At the time of making this video, Bitcoin was trading at roughly $13,000 which brings me to my next point of why you should consider investing Bitcoin. And here, I'll give you the top four reasons. Number one, Wall Street is going crypto. This one I see a lot, and I'd say is the most important. The chairman of the SEC, Jay Clayton, said that they are currently considering allowing cryptocurrency ETFs. Last year, Franklin Templeton Investments, a global investment fund with nearly $70 billion in assets under management, filed paperwork with the SEC to launch a government money market fund where shares could be tokenized on the Stellar blockchain network, but also investors could invest in traditional fund shares. As well, two months ago, Fidelity, another huge institutional investor, launched his first ever blockchain fund for wealthy investors, which required a minimum investment of $100,000. And just last month, PayPal, one of the biggest online money service providers in the world, said it would start allowing its millions of users to start buying, selling, and holding Bitcoins with their president and CEO, Dan Schulman, saying, the transition to digital forms of currency is inevitable, and with it comes clear benefits in terms of access to financial systems, efficiency, speed, and immunity of the system, and the ability of governments to transfer funds to citizens quickly. 
So the huge amount of money these institutional investors oversee will dramatically increase the demand and therefore the price of crypto. But also I'd say it's a huge vote of confidence in the staying power of Bitcoin. Number two, supply is limited. As I mentioned before, at the moment there can only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in the world. So scarcity will drive its growth. Similar to why gold is considered a good investment and has a high value. Next up is Bitcoin's network is increasing in size and scale. Just like the adaptation of the internet, Bitcoin is also becoming adapted by our society. More and more businesses are ready to use Bitcoin. There are more wallets, exchanges, and platforms available for users. Additionally, there's more vendors who accept Bitcoin. There are even Bitcoin debit and credit cards that allow users to spend their Bitcoins anywhere that accepts Visa. Facebook even announced this year that they will start creating their own crypto token called Libra. Number four would be invest in something that isn't controlled by the conventional financial systems because the financial markets have become completely detached from reality as evidenced by the stock market hitting record highs in the midst of a global pandemic. I covered the reasons behind this in one of my previous videos, but quickly, this is largely due to the government's unprecedented quantitative easing or QE, as well as historic government debt ratios. So there's almost surely going to be extremely volatile times ahead of us in the financial markets. When that will happen is another question though, but in any case, Bitcoin allows you to avoid these concerns and avoid this major crash. Now that being said, this is a nice bridge to flip to the other side of the argument and understand what are the reasons some investors are bearish on Bitcoin or why they're against investing in it. And the first reason for this is that Bitcoin for the last year or so has been moving in tandem with the stock markets. Bitcoin was started as an alternative currency or investment to traditional investments. And therefore it should, similar to gold, increase in value when stocks and currencies fall in value. But this hasn't been happening for the last year or so. As such, the logic goes that if Bitcoin is going to rise and fall with the stock market, it makes more sense just to invest in the stock market alone. The next reason investors are pessimistic about Bitcoin is its extreme volatility since creation. Taking a look at this chart, while only around 10 years old, you can see how quick Bitcoin has increased or decreased in value and it's certainly not outside the realm of possibilities that this volatility will continue. The third reason to not invest in Bitcoin is that there's little to no regulation. This might sound strange because this lack of government or banking middleman is also one of the main positives for most investors, but it's also bad news if something ever goes wrong. If, for example, there is a hack, your investment could be at serious risk. The fourth reason people are pessimistic about Bitcoin is that it has limited utility or use. Proponents hail Bitcoin as a replacement for cash or the anti-banking currency, but it currently lacks utility for broad-based adaptation, which while certainly improving as we discussed, it will still take years for it to reach the full flexibility of other investment vehicles. And the final reason investors are against Bitcoin is that potentially it isn't really as scarce as its proponents suggest. While it's true that 21 million Bitcoin is the maximum amount that is allowed to be created today, it's not impossible that programmers with an overwhelming community support could choose to increase Bitcoin's token limit at some point in the future. Although it's very unlikely that consensus would be reached to increase the 21 million token cap, the possibility of it happening is also not 0%. Comparatively, a physical store of value like gold is a finite asset. The gold that's currently in the ground or has been mined is all that will ever exist on this planet. So considering all these downsides, why did I decide to invest in Bitcoin? Well, I'd say the single biggest reason is because Bitcoin has the highest potential to 10x or give me a thousand percent return on investment within the short term, which I would casually define as within the next one to three years. This means if you invest $10,000 today, which is roughly how much one Bitcoin costs, the probability that it becomes $100,000 is higher than any other asset class at the moment. To put that into perspective, here are some of the average returns of other common asset classes, or put simply, things that you can invest in over the last 20 years. Large cap stock market companies was 8.19%. Small cap stock market companies was 5.46%. Emerging market stock, meaning investing in developing economies like India, Thailand, or Colombia, was 4.23%. Real estate investment trusts, or REITs, was 5.33%. High yield bonds, or government debt, was 6.2%. Also from the period between 1994 and 2018, Aggregate annual returns of hedge funds, whose leaders are supposed to be the brightest financial minds in the world, which is the only way that they get their clients to fork over the six to seven minimum figure investment that's normally required. These guys had a return on investment of only 6.74%. 
So considering this, I would say that any return over 10% could be considered good or even a great return on investment. So the possibility of getting 1000% is life changing in returns to my own personal financial stability. It's also important to note that I don't plan on trading my position for many years. So I'm prepared to ride out the volatility for at least the next three to five years before reevaluating my investment. Finally, in regards to how I invested in Bitcoin, I used an app in an exchange called crypto.com because it had quite low fees. But which app or exchange you use also depends on where you live because there's different tax obligations. Other options include Coinbase and Coinbase Pro, which is great for beginners, Cash App, which is owned by PayPal, and Binance, which has the largest amount of trades by volume. Also, just so you know, my bank didn't allow me to send a transfer to pay for crypto. Also, I couldn't use my credit card, so I had to use a debit card for my US bank account. Well, that's it for now. Thank you again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up to keep the YouTube gods happy. See you next week.